be truly sorry. <laughs> Club. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me, on this festive occasion to enjoy feasting and frivolity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As is our wont. And I won't if you won't. <laughs> <laughs> As is our wont, we also regale each other, you know, with nice tales and stories, oh, like, you know, to pass the time more pleasurably between courses. I do. Yeah. I oh. knew better to start the ball rolling tonight. And the wife of our founder, Lady Rhoda Cockhorse. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the story which I wish to tell is by force of circumstances a very short one, since the wall upon which it was written was in a very small room. <laughs> but it is apt, since it is the first known festive occasion when gifts were given many, many years ago. Oh. <laughs> Lummy, I've told you a thousand times what I want for Christmas. I know, Adam, but it's a very big step to take, you know. <laughs> that much to ask? How do you know if you've never had it? <laughs> I can't stand it any longer. I must have it. Oh, all right, Adam. Blimey, <laughs> Eve, I... Well, I, well, I, I have. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, Bertie, my little boy. Thank you. Well done, Lady Cockhorn. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, that reminds me of a story I saw written on a wall. Oh, time. really, Mr. Perkins? <laughs> yes. You see, I was standing there minding my own business. Yeah, well, all right, maybe I don't think the circumstances matter. What was the story? Oh, well, I was just about to tell you, see, it, it goes like this. <clears throat> there was a young lady called Grace whose course it could no longer lay. Her mother said, Nelly, there's more in your belly than devil yeah, went right, in. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Fergus. You. I now call upon General Sir Effingham Clodhopper. Oh, right. General! General! Oh, good morning, sir. It's time to do your bit. Uh, I can't do that. She's up in London. <laughs> to tell your story. Let's uh, see what, what you mean. I was just thinking of a Christmas I once spent in Africa uh, many years ago as district commissioner. Oh, it was a lonely outpost, you see, right in the Indian. Yeah. And I remember. Sir, thank you, Thompson. I see then you managed to get a bird for Christmas? Yes, sir. She's waiting in my room, sir. <laughs> I'm into turkey. Well, you can't get turkeys in this part of Africa, sir, but that is the next best thing. Well, well what is it? It's what we call the Uzalem bird, sir. <laughs> the Uzalem bird, eh? You mean that creature that flies around uh, and finally... Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, I managed to catch it before it finished the trick. Well, that's damn good work, Thompson. Yeah. Only the egg is missing, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Well, Thompson. Uh, yes, sir. You're the uh, expert at the local lingo. What are those drums saying? Those drums, they say, boom, titty, boom, titty, boom, titty, boom, sir. <laughs> Exactly what I thought. <laughs> Damn good. Well, come along, everybody. Let's get started. Papa, are we not going to wait for Captain Dripping? Well, no, I... He might be here uh, quite a bit late, you know. After all, I sent him down to the native village with that consignment of, uh, uh, saucepan lids. Saucepan lids? Whatever for, Henry? Well, under our new policy of educating the local populace, you see, I have decreed that henceforward all women should, uh, cover their, uh, Upper parts. <laughs> Is that quite wise, Henry? Well, it's very wise. <laughs> After all, what else would I possibly do with ten gross of saucepan lids? Huh? <laughs> but, Papa, how are they going to keep them in place? Are they? Well, uh, they could uh, sort of uh, well, stick them. Well, that's what you should have done with them in the first place. <laughs> oh, please. Well, I've never heard of anything so stupid. <laughs> restless tonight. Really? What makes you think that, my dear? Oh, that's screaming. What screaming? Those shots. What shots? Oh, perhaps I just imagined it. <laughs> I expect you did, my dear. Can you pass me another potato, please, Virginia? Oh, yes. The natives are revolting. They've got guns and cannons and rifles. It's horrible. Horrible. Captain Rippy. <laughs> the dinner's getting cold. Captain Dinner's getting cold. It's out there, my... <laughs> I must apologize, ladies, for being a trifle late, but it was hell out there. I was lucky to get away with my life. Yes, well, we accept your apologies. Now, be a good chap and sit down and get on with it. Yes. Thank you, sir. You're right, sir. My dinner is getting cold. <laughs> Don't you think we ought to do something? Yes. I think you're right, my dear. Thompson! Sir! Take Captain Dripping's plate outside and warm it up, will you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Virginia, pour up uh, Captain what's his name and glass of wine, will you? Yes, Thanks. Papa. My dear, <laughs> funny things happen this time of year. <laughs> that was a very bad year in any case. Ah, 
Thank you very much, Thompson. Very nice. I'm afraid it's only half a portion, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking it was, shocking. Yes, Mother, you told us. More meat, Mother? No, thank you. Slaughtered all the men they did. <laughs> More meat, Fiona? Thank you, Henry. Lashed at their bellies, tacked off their ears and shoved them in their mouths. Oh, no, thank you. I don't know how to And wait till you hear what they did to all the women. Oh. Stuffing, Mother? For the lucky ones, yes. <laughs> What a lovely night. Look at those stars. <laughs> now, now with, with your permission, might I go and see what's going on out there? If you're interested, Jimmy, yes. <laughs> I've been saving this bottle of port for a special occasion. Oh, oh, how very nice. And I have a feeling that this could very well be it. Now, come on, my dears. Be up standing. Virginia, get your mother to her feet, Fiona, will you? Dear, please, thank you. All face the portrait. And I give you all the toast. To Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. The Queen! The Queen. Queen. You may smoke. of course, that uh, we cannot allow the ladies to fall into their hands. No, of course not, sir. Shall I, uh... Good Lord, no, no. My privilege. <laughs> Loaded? No, sir, I've only had the small one. <laughs> you realise, Fiona, what it is I have to do? Yes, Henry, of course. Could we go into the bathroom? The carpet, you know. Very considerate of you, my dear. Take your mother with you, will you? Oh, but I didn't say what they did to us in 1807 wasn't enjoyable. <laughs> it's the principle of the thing, mother. Yes, Henry's right. Come along, dear. Oh. Virginia. Very well, but don't keep dripping too long. <laughs> oh, oh, Alistair, I love you. And I love you too, Virginia. Isn't it awful to think that we have never even I had know, enough? I know, I know, I think of nothing else. <laughs> oh, Alistair, I've always been brought up to believe in death before dishonor. I know. But just this once, wouldn't it be all right if we could have it the other way around? <laughs> Yes, but we'll have to be quick. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Remember. Remember your position. Thank you, sir. Yes. Oh. Captain Drew. Oh, sir. You forget yourself. No, I got carried away, sir, in the heat of the moment. I don't doubt it. But it's going to look dashed awkward on your conduct report. Oh, my God. Come, Virginia. Yes, Papa. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. What? 
What are you saying, man? Well, they're all celebrating, sir. They're all very happy. Happy? Yes, sir. Because of the tin lids that you gave for the ladies, uh, sir. <laughs> Oh, Dripping, uh, you realize what it is that I've done? Yes, sir. How can I ever forgive myself? That bottle of port was 50 years old. <laughs> Putting is served. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I calls upon Sir Francis Fiddler, master of the Queen's music, to tell us a tale. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it so happens that I've been working on a series of madrigals, which were first performed before Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth I, with somewhat unfortunate results. It is long overdue. Coughing and choking with yards of bamboo. The chimney sweep poking his brush up your blue. Balls, balls, banquets and balls. <laughs> Laughter and merriment filling the halls. There is no reason to sigh as snow falls. For now is the season for banquets and balls. And now we would like to sing for the Amadrigal, commemorating that great day when His Gracious Majesty King Henry VIII was presented with the palace of Hampton Court. On the river nearby, Richmond rose an edifice fine. And Woolsey said, Your Majesty, it shall be thine. He made the king a present of this fine resort. And, and that's how King Harry got his hands and caught. <laughs> oh, the ale and the wine did flow, frolicking under the mistletoe. I can assure thee that none went short. On the day good King Harry got his hands and caught. <laughs> In the city, a committee got a quick report. They said it would be a pity for to miss such sport. And so they did not tarry, but the whole town brought to, to see good King Harry with his hand and caught. <laughs> there we beheld his majesty, standing at the window for all to see. Oh, how his loyal subjects fought. For a glimpse of King Harry with his hands and caught. So he took his royal scepter, for he loved a joke, and he waved it out the window, and the sash cord broke. <laughs> and Catherine of Aragon was quite distraught. <laughs> On the day the King Harry got his hands and caught. Parliament issued a quick decree, setting up a trust fund immediately. And the Chancellor of England lent the King his support. On the day the King Harry got his hands and Reminded me of a concert I attended recently. <laughs> List? No? 
I had another drink all day. <laughs> <laughs> and you were there, there was this particular passage. Ah, a musical one. No, the passage to the gentleman's toilet. <laughs> now, I was standing there just minding my own business. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Perkin, but what is the aim of all this? Aim? Well, I generally aim for that little badge under the makeup. No, I mean the, the, the aim of the story. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I was standing there looking at this religious story. Ah, a religious one. Oh, we'll enjoy that, Mr. Fagin. Oh, no, no, we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there once was a lass named Miss Flickers who once went to tea at the vicar's. When he said a prayer at the start of the affair, instead of amen, she said, well, thank you again, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> I, I, I haven't finished yet. You've missed the best bit. For which we may be truly thankful. Oh. <laughs> there was this curious happening that befell this young lieutenant that served under me. I beg your pardon? Well, in the matter of speaking. <laughs> yeah. He was corresponding with this young woman who lived with her sister in this dark old house, miles from anywhere. Expecting someone? No! No, I, I merely thought we might have tea. Ringworm will bring the tea in when it is ready, Esmeralda. Well, when will that be, Harriet? When he has made it. <laughs> Tea, Miss Harriet. Thank you, Ringworm. <laughs> this letter arrived for Miss Esmeralda. Oh, why did you not give it to me earlier, Ringworm? Thank you, Ringworm. But it is for me, Harriet. It is my letter. Do not be difficult, I beg you, Esmeralda. But it is my letter, Harriet. Why are you so cruel? Why won't you give it to me? You know perfectly well why. It's because of our problem. <laughs> see what you've done. You've upset Ringworm. I'm sorry. Will that be all, Miss Harriet? I sincerely hope so. <laughs> it comes from Portsmouth. Then he has written. Who has written? A, a, a friend, a, a, a Lieutenant Bangham of the Royal Navy. He, he, I... Yes, Esmeralda, you what? I have invited him to spend Christmas with us. You did what? Well, it's my house as well as yours. You foolish, foolish girl. Where did you meet this Bangham? We have, we have never met. We have, we have merely corresponded. But supposing those things happen... They won't. They might. He might see it. He won't. I won't let him. You might not be able to help it. That must be him now. In ringworm. Hey. <laughs> is it? Is it Lieutenant Bang? It is indeed, ma'am. How do you do? How do you do? May I present Lieutenant Tremblow of the French Navy. I've taken the liberty of bringing him along with me. Lieutenant Rene Trembler of the French Navy. <laughs> At your service. He is attached to our ship. And uh, he had nowhere to spend Christmas. Oh, what ship are you off? HMS Nuki, ma'am. Yes, he is off the Nuki, but I am on it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, pray, which one of you ladies is Miss Esmeralda? I am. 
And you are to spend Christmas with us, no matter what. They may stay if they wish to, Esmeralda. Yes. Tell me, did you have a good trip down? Uh, possible, ma'am, possible. It was somewhat hard, going over the cobbles. Yes, it was very hard on the cobblers. <laughs> The cobblers, the round oh, cobblers well, on this. I suppose you wouldn't be like to show the bathroom where you can wash your hands. The bathroom? No, thank you, but I uh, would yes, like to have... he would. No, I badly need a... No, 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 no. Rennie, no, no, no. Please. In England, we do not do that. No, but I want to do it. I Rennie, please, please. In England, we only go in there to wash our hands. Curious. In France, we wash our hands in the hand basin. Very well, I will show you the way. No, Esmeralda. I shall ring for the maid. I prefer you to remain here. As you say, Harriet. My sister is far from well. Oh, poor girl. I too am far from well. I, I have a touch of malaria. Oh, how distressing. Yes, sometimes I shake so much, I cannot control my hands. <laughs> you rang, miss? Uh, show this gentleman the bathroom. Certainly, miss. Follow me, sir. I'm sorry, I have a touch of malaria. I cannot control my hands. In that case, you go first. Oh, yes. After you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you! Not a touch. A charming fellow. One of the best. I'm quite sure. <laughs> Should we not go into who investigate? No, you stay here. I shall investigate. Ah, Miss Esmeralda, alone at last. Oh, Lieutenant. Call me Humphrey. Oh, Humphrey, I feel I am in terrible danger. So you wrote me in your letter. That is why I came. But I did not come unprepared. You see? In here, a brace of pistols. Also, a sextant. What are you doing, Lieutenant? Nothing, ma'am. Merely showing her my instrument. <laughs> Your what? My instrument, ma'am. When you raise it up... <laughs> in the air, one can tell from its angle one's exact position. <laughs> oh! Oh, how very useful. <laughs> no sailor man should be without one. Yes, I would like you to go into the kitchen, Perkins needs assistance in preparing supper. Yes, Harriet. I will see you later, Humphrey. Don't be too sure of that. Remember our problem. <laughs> Of malaria. <laughs> Gentlemen, come closer, please. Oh, closer, of course, mademoiselle is looking me much pleasure. Yes, so that's quite close enough. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> now, gentlemen, I do not wish to alarm you, but I think it would be wise if you did not stay in this house. Why, ma'am? Well, it's no good concealing the fact. To put it bluntly, we are yes. haunted. <laughs> Haunted. 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 Oh, yeah. There are things in this house which watch our every movement. Every movement? Every movement. Can't you feel it? Oh, yes, certainly it's marvelous. <laughs> Me also. Something extraordinary is watching us. <laughs> but I have not yet told you the worst. No? No. At midnight rides the headless. Huntsman. 
The headless huntsman? Oh, yes, it's a dreadful apparition. He rides up to the door, dismounts, and sounds his hunting horn. Well, that is very curious. Why? Well, if he has no head, how does he sound the horn? <laughs> that opens up a field of considerable speculation. <laughs> wait, wait, I have it. Then keep it yourself. No, no, perhaps a horn is blown by the horse for him. Well, I must be going. But remember, gentlemen, you have been warned. Esmeralda was right. <laughs> She's in great danger. We are all in great danger. Oh. Did you? But yes. There's no one in there. But wait, wait. There may be a very small man in there. I'm gonna drop this bell in, we shall see. <laughs> Midnight. But his horse was. Wait! We must all leave this house immediately. But why? Because of the legend. The legend! They would hear the huntsman's horn must surely perish for the dawn. Yes, he who hears them dreadful sounds shall hang himself unless he drowns. We've all seen it and heard it, every one of us. Yes, we've all heard the horn. I see. Yes. Then what does not end up dead goes completely off his head. Our only chance is the last verse. The last verse? They who would escape this dreadful nemesis must this second leave the premises. Now go and back! We must flee! We leave this house at once! No! Wait! <laughs> there is no need. There, ladies, is your headless huntsman. Ringworm? Not Ringworm, but Charles Burke, the body snatcher. But that's impossible. We have seen his testimonials. <laughs> then allow me to show you his coconuts. No! <laughs> By merely knocking his knees together, he can produce the sound of horses' hooves. Go. You would have been frightened and left your house, which he then would have proceeded to have plundered. Just a moment. I know you. You're Inspector Nicker of the Yard. Oh, Inspector Nicker, how can we ever thank you enough? There is no need, ma'am. I shall now depart with my prisoner. Oh, no, you mustn't. Please stay with us over the holidays, Inspector Nicker. <laughs> no, no, my dear. You, off to the Black Mariah. <laughs> and close the door after you, scum. Sorry. <laughs> well, the mystery is solved. The prisoner has gone to justice. And as for me... Yes? Nick goes off for Christmas. <laughs> Final tale of the evening. Mm. I call upon that esteemed theatrical actress, a lady who throughout the years has given us all great pleasure with her various parts. Oh. 
in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Miss Molly Coddle. Yay! Thank you, my dear, dear friends. Bless you, thank you. Well, this evening, I would like to tell you about a revolutionary new form of drama in which I have lately become interested. It is called pantomime. And it is peculiar in that some of the ladies' parts are taken by men and vice versa. That sounds very queer. Yes, well, it is rather confusing, I can tell you. For instance, in the one in which I am now appearing, which is called Aladdin, I play the part of the Fairy Queen. Female, of course. <laughs> Time is here once more. That glittering, sparkling, crashing bore <laughs> that keeps little children happily amused while mum's at the bingo and dad's on the booze. <laughs> and so, with a wave of my magic wand, I'll waft you all to fairy lawns. <laughs> shiftless lad. It really is too flaming bad. The lee way leaves me on me tod to do the work the little. Aladdin! The lady calling for her son is the widow woman, all in one. Her husband is a golf instructor. Which is a very honourable profession to be sure, but one very difficult to find an acceptable rhyme for. yoo -hoo. A butterfly. <laughs> That's Hanky Poo, I bet you. P. Kin's most illustrious lecher. He always comes round here on Mondays for me to wash his dirty undies. I don't mind that, but what I hate, he expects me to do it while he waits. <laughs> and how is my favourite girl today? Fine, just take your hand away. Come, don't tease your saucy minx. Blimey, how his technique stinks. <laughs> Show a bit of common sense. Oh, it needs the ring of confidence. Why get yourself in such a lather? What's wrong with a bit about your father? Oh, <laughs> oh Mama, what's all this caper? I do believe he's going to rape her. <laughs> you have come in time to scotch it. Well, carry on. I'd like to watch it. Ah. Oh, what a monster I have mothered. His dad was right. He should have been smothered. Roaming the streets day and night. He's visiting clubs, it isn't right. Oh, no, no. Oh, Ma, I only like to get out and see things. Yes, like strippers popping out of G-strings. <laughs> oh, how can a woman brought up in piety live in such a permissive society? <laughs> Scrimping, scraping, hoping, praying. Talking of praying, as I was saying, I've mummy oh. in my person more. Why didn't you mention this before? No, Come I on. Mean, I'm not the sort of man to quibble. I'd give a lot for a little nibble. You would? Yeah. Well, come inside. I think I've got something cooking. Here, do you like salmon? Do I like salmon? Well, there is no salmon, but... There's a place for us. A time and place for us. How do you... And so their fish they soon were tackling, followed by a piece of crackling. <laughs> but who is this so big and tough? Gold Arkle Sulkin. That's quite enough. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, he looks so sad and tragic. I know. I'll help him with my magic. <laughs> Even the props don't work. It's too much. You know. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear my cry. Princess Yo-Yo draweth nigh. Blessed of heaven, star of night, provider of plenty, supplier of light, <laughs> child of beauty, daughter of favour. All in all, a right little rhyber. <laughs> 
Make way for the palanquin of the most illustrious daughter of the Mandarin Hanky Poo, the Princess Yo Yo. Beautiful she is and agile, like eggshell china, slim and fragile. Her loveliness surpassed by no rose. I've always wanted to play with yo-yos. <laughs> Young man, I wonder, can you aid me? I'm looking for the lad who laid me. Not me, I'm not the one you're seeking. <laughs> oh, please, let me finish speaking. The one who laid me down some kitchens I know, and lives near here as far as I know. One who, despite my obvious beauty, didn't try and get all smoochy. <laughs> oh, that was me, still young and raw. I didn't know what it was for. So, you're the one. My, how he's grown. Those sturdy thighs, that swelling chest, those bulging muscles, and the rest. If they liked that who had been made, there wouldn't have been much lino laid. <laughs> Can it be that she's so fickle, I've missed the chance for slap and tickle? You're wondering why I came to find you? Yes. Because you left this lamp behind you. Oh, is that all? Then you didn't come to thank me. Thank you? What for? Well, I made your footstool and sent it to the palace. Oh, it was a beautiful stool. Yes. If you remember, you wanted it made of oak, but I couldn't get any oak. No, so... It had to be you! It had to be... Thus, seeing that their love was hopeless, she left him desolate and gropeless. <laughs> Her youthful wooer had in his hand the means to do her. The lamp, it needed but one rub, and she'd be in the pudding club. Oh my, what is this dreadful spectre? Can it be the tax inspector? Oh no. You may think this rather camp, but I am the genie of the lamp. Better known everywhere as the genie with the light brown hair. <laughs> oh, I know not what a genie be, so what do I call you, he or she? You may think this is rather feckless, but we genies are quite, quite sexless. <laughs> to hear this answer, I can't wait. Then how do genies procreate? You'll find this rather hard to believe, and how we do it, I can't conceive. But we increase our population entirely without... Well, shall I just say so, shall I? Just... <laughs> well, all I can say is you may not have guessed it, but you've been leaving out the best bit. Oh, shoe repairers. <laughs> I come here not to bandy words about the habits of the bees and birds. I come to grant you the wish you're seeking and make you the richest girl in Peking. Oh, I'm not a girl. You must be mistaken. If you're not a girl, you must be grossly misshapen. <laughs> I'm very much afraid that we mystics aren't used to boys with such vital statistics. Oh, that's why right. boys are always so. Well, you've got to have boobs in every show. <laughs> well, we must press on. I my magic powers invoke and we shall disappear in a puff of smoke. <laughs> Using his most potent spell, he took Aladdin down to hell. An odd direction, you might say. But in China, they all go that way. <laughs> so cruel, isn't it? That looks just like an underground lavity. Why, it's the home of the Demon King. It's all you can find for, I think. <laughs> I smell 
smell the blood of an Englishman. Wrong pantomime. <laughs> yeah, of course it was. That was last year. Uh, uh, what mortals are these who dare to invade the dreaded regions of the king of the underworld? That doesn't rhyme. Oh, we can't speak in verse anymore, poor old thing. Why not? Well, he's had the, um... What operation? <laughs> <laughs> Keep on laughing like that. He's at a very funny time of life. Speak, I say, or I will. <laughs> <laughs> Damn thing, I've watched it this morning and can't wait to tell you. <laughs> Speak, I say, or I will summon the powers of darkness and reduce you to get off to ashes. <laughs> oh, don't be such a meanie. It's only me, your favourite genie. Good gracious me, so it's... Oh, I say, I see you've got yourself a piece of crackling. <laughs> it's not a girl. His name's Aladdin. Well, with all that... Uh, 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 well, it must be padding. Yes, I see. I've heard about chaps like that. I won't have them down here. I know it's hell, but we're not that queer. All right. <laughs> well, we'll be leaving you soon if you will grant him just one boon. Grant a boon? You dare to bring that crazy mixed up kid down here and say grant a boon from me, the king of the whole damned underworld? Mephistopheles! Yes, dear. What's that racket going on out there? Uh, yes, dear. It, it's all right, dear. I, I'm only having a chat with Jeannie and his friend. Well, stop wasting time and come in here. The furnace is going out. Uh, yes, dear, right away. I'll have to go. I can't. What am I going to do with this thing? Sir! Pardon? Yes. What would I do? Dad! Don't do that. Sir, in answer to your question, may I make a small suggestion? No need for it to be a lumber. Why don't you stick it up your jumba? <laughs> How do you mean? Like this. <laughs> oh, what a good idea. It works. For that, I'll grant you your boon. What is it you wish? Oh, thank you, sir. I only want witches, so I can marry the girl I wishes. Very well. I shall cast a spell. <laughs> You're right, Chooks. I don't know what it is. I've been spellbound all day long. <laughs> oh, powers of darkness, grant us what we want! <laughs> it's not what I want, it's what he wants. Oh, I don't know, though. Mrs. Double uh, Yes, dear, coming, dear. Oh, powers of darkness, grant him his wishes! If there's a moral to this tale, it's by your love the lamp as well. <laughs> and you'll live happily after ever, for you'll both have things to rub together. <laughs> Well, but when you said you wanted to give it to me, I thought you meant my present. 